All right. Hello, everybody. Joseph Claire here. Just making sure this is recording. All right. Um, today I'm going to do a quick sort of semi tutorial about making uh, a folder close icon uh, seifuku uniform. Um, it's not exactly specific to uh, a folder icon, but this theme happens to be a folder icon. Um, first things first, uh, I'll go over the requirements for the image. So if you look here, um, I'm using Usagi 3DS theme editor. It's my preferred one at the moment. There isn't anything that's better than it. Um, it has import, remove, export, and then on the very bottom here, you see the actual size. So you can, you can see here it's 64 by 128, and then in parentheses, 74 by 64. Um, here we have my current one, and uh, it's 128 by 64, which is the size that is set here, the actual size that you need it to be. And uh, the viewable part is the 74 by 64, which is from here to about here. Um, even though it is supposedly this section, um, parts of this viewable area is actually not viewable. Um, so if I turn on this, this is my template here that I use for previewing stuff. Um, you can see that there's a one pixel border all the way around, and then a little bit of curving, and then uh, this hard-coded sort of like fuller dip right there. And so that's that's viewable with this template here that I have. Um, I'll put a link to that, uh, at least the thread that I have it in, um, since that has just literally everything. But uh, I guess we'll we'll start. Um, so normally, what I like to do um, is well, for one, have a reference. So I uh, had to reget all of the anime to find a better source than the original one that I made. Because this one here, I had no idea what this was or anything, and this looked really narrow, and it's not, you know, full shot. And so instead, I went, got the exact same episode, and this is just a little bit after that scene, where you get a nice full shot. But, uh... <coughs> so first, um... I normally get a base color. Um, the color that I want the folder to mainly be, and in this case it's her front shirt part, and so I use that color, and then the back color, of course, I use the darker color. I might have tweaked it a little bit to make it stand out more, stand out less, uh, depending on how I feel, um, but it's kind of nice using this template. You have my folder front and folder back, and they have masks. I'm using GIMP, so uh, it's free. GIMP is free anyways. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. It's not like something crazy like Photoshop or Manga Studio. Um, but yeah, pretty much all I did was make a duplicate of the layer. And then uh, from there, I could just change the color to whatever I want. So if I wanted this black, I just change it black. Even if I'm not selecting anything, it just changes only the area that I have black, because that's all that this is. And so, um, I pick those colors, and then the... What is this one? Oh, I think this one was the one that I picked for... Yeah, okay. So this was the original color that, uh, I think I got from here 
or not this one, but the other picture. And uh, I thought it was a little too dark, and so I brightened it to uh, the current one that it is. And then um, this part actually came a little bit uh, after all of this stuff. So if I go to my collar pieces, um, I just made these collar pieces out of whatever. And so let's make sure that's visible. We can hide this. Oh, we can actually leave those. Um, is that shirt, shadow, skin tone. All right. So I originally made a collar, um, just one half, since it's easy to mirror this uh, sort of thing. So I started with this half, and I was just like, uh, let's grab this tool, make a couple of curvy lines. However, I think it might look nice and from there just fill it in in black or any other color that you really want. I normally use black because it's uh, easily viewable. It's not it's not too hard to uh, mix with. It, it's it's easy to not mix with anything else I guess. But uh, pretty much you just do that. right? And then of course you can mirror it afterwards and then see what it looks like together. This one, I didn't like how it looked quite, uh, it looked like it was really wide on the top, and so I was like, no, I'll, I'll redo it. And so I made it even more narrow. Um, whether or not that was a good idea, because this looks, it looks fairly different. Uh, it might not be quite as narrow as this, but that's okay. Um, I don't exactly have a huge amount of space to work with, so I'm, I'm quite okay with that. And uh, so, yeah, the collar first is what I did. And then uh, after that, I made the tie. I just kind of wanted to put it around the same place, so I put it there. And then uh, the inside shirt, which is the inside part that you see here. And I just made that nice little shell looking thing. And then you merge all of them. Um, into separate layers, and uh, I can I can do a little preview of that too. So let's let's say we want to do this one. I just duplicate the two parts, merge them down. Or you can actually see them. Merge them down, and then uh, underneath this layer, I put a white layer. This is to turn it into a mask. So I put a white layer, I merge down, and then I just invert the color. And then I have a, a uh, mask sort of template that I can use. And uh, with this, I just uh, copy the whole image. So uh, I just copy the whole layer, and then um, I can put it as a mask um, for, let's say, if I made a new layer. And I wanted to put a mask on, and then I just stick this mask here. Oops, I didn't copy it. There. All right, so there's the mask, and it's on this blank layer at the moment. But I can put any color on this mask or on this layer now, and uh, it'll be masked correctly to the shape that I had it. And so I can just quickly pick colors and uh, put them in, and it'll change the colors. Um, doing this helps uh, make things a little quicker sometimes when you want to you want to like change the color of something, but you just like I don't know whether you want to change the color or if you want to change the actual shape. Or something like that. It's easily accessible, so you can just quickly change something, remake the whole layer, and then just paste it in on the layer mask, and then bam, you have like your new, your new collar version. So like if I had, uh, I have these two here, I can just copy this one, slap it right on top of the mask, and then there's magically my new 
alternative one. But um, let's see. After I made those, I I found it uh, flat, really flat. So as a sort of image of what it looked like, this is what it looks like without uh, anything else, after I put just the lines and then I masked them and colored them. And um, from here, actually I can have that too, I also had the skin tone. But uh, from here, um, it's really flat. Really, really flat. And so, you add shadows. Pretty simple. Um, shadows, you can just duplicate the same layer and uh, apply the layer mask so now it's actually just a layer and uh, it's only that singular shape so there's nothing magical about it anymore and then normally how I do it is I just colorize it make it all the way dark and then add a little bit of blur to it Gaussian blur is nice and I usually put at like one or two and then you just slap it underneath. And that's about it. That's that's how you actually do that part. Um, so if I went to all my other stuff, I have the collarbone shadows, I have these which I attempted to do, but it doesn't look that good, so I left them out. And then I have the tie, and uh, after that, I because this was a folder, I can have a, a non-symmetrical design because this this won't be mirrored across the mirror, unlike uh, the icon borders, which is normally what I used it as. But uh, this time, I wanted it as a folder because someone else did it as a folder, and so I'm kind of wanting to follow that person for the time being, and so. Well, also that, and because there's a pocket here, and it's not symmetrical. And so it fit what I wanted. But a uh, pocket was really simple. I just put a line and blurred it a little bit. Put some generic looking shapes that look sort of like a pencil, and what should be in a ruler, I'm assuming. It's a ruler. And then I put a little bit of shading on that, too. Um, the shading on this is a little bit different because um, if I just had this by itself, this has an opacity so I can actually see through this a little bit and it gets a lot darker. And so what I did was I just removed the actual insides of my shadow and then uh, just put them so that they're around the border so it doesn't affect the colors in the inside. And... That's actually it. Um, you can see this is my alternate one, which um, I also worked on. I wanted to test it. And uh, similar process here. Um, you see I have my base and then I put the colors in. You can actually show what this one looks like instead of that one. And um, it's not fantastic, this one. It's not that great. I needed a test that uh, I could look at and consider. And so I made this one. And it's got the front back again. And then, of course, I had this uh, as a separate layer here. And uh, these are the shadows to those layers. So this is a section here. And then this is a section here. And then... Uh, on the bottom here is this one section, and then I put two ribbons on top of that, which are these two layers, and then uh, one of these should actually be the lines here. All of them have uh, shadows, so I can actually see what the hell I'm doing, because otherwise these are all the same color. And then, uh, of course, there are these, which are in the heart. <coughs> I made a nice little simple heart um, that you can't see. Right here, I made a simple heart, and uh, I just cut out the middle, I 
tilted it around a little bit and just made it into an actual little necklace thing. Kind of really shoddy wiring, but whatever. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Um, after that, you have your wonderful template, or your wonderful image. Um, normally, uh, you don't have to because this doesn't really matter. Um, I put the base color as the background for the rest of it. So uh, if there's anything strange about it, it won't be like super, super strange. But as it is, this template's pretty accurate, so you won't notice even if you don't have it on. It'll, it'll look fine. You won't see like stray black around the edges, hopefully. But um, this is just like a safety precaution, you know, just in case. So at least, if anything else, it'll be like this uh, alias or anti-alias uh, pink color or something. But uh, it also this also has a file preview, so you can see where it will come out and go down. Unfortunately, I don't have a fancy way to change the colors. I can actually do that. Um, it's pretty easy. If I wanted to, I just do the exact same thing that I had before, and just put some white, merge down, make a new layer, add the mask. Oopsie. Oh, I saved it. Did not mean to save that. That's okay. I didn't really do too much. Worst case, I'll just have to figure out what I did do. Um, but anyways, invert the color. Copy that. Paste that there. And then from here, I can actually remove this layer. Jeez, this might need a file layer. And I can put whatever color I want now. So if I wanted it to stay black, I can keep it as black. Or I could change it to a different color. But, uh... Yeah, that's about it. There's there's not much to uh, using these template files. There's not much to actually me making these folder icons beyond just adding a couple lines and adding a couple shadows but they look kind of nice they're not too bad um, yeah that's about it uh, thanks for watching uh, if you did watch feel free to uh, use this kind of way of making icons I I'm not sure how how to describe it? It's uh, a tutorial more specific on how to actually make something similar to what I have been making for a number of my themes, which is just this kind of uh, uniform uh, themed icon that looks uh, pretty good, I think. I think it looks pretty good. That's why I've been using it. But um, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you can, uh, hope you try it. And uh, I hope you learned something.